when the sun, Sol, the heart, relatively opposes Pluto in retrograde. And Pluto in retrograde is the intersection of spirit extending away from us. And aloha, greetings. It is noon on July 11th, 2024. And based off my previous video, I was able to take some of the feedback and actually take a more structured approach so that I can not only implement an educational approach to the perspectives I have astrologically, but also apply my nature of symbolism to deconstruct not only interpretive speculation, but narratives that we can use to associate the language that is around this time period. Now, one of the things I wanted to open up with is that I honestly took a bunch of notes for this time so that we remain structured, but I don't think there's gonna be a blue beam event. I don't think there's gonna be anything DMT related. I don't think there's really gonna be a major event. You can speculate based off drama that may occur, but we're gonna get into what I personally see arriving during this time, not only as the message of its time, but the lesson of its time. So. Without further ado, we're gonna navigate this and understand this passage of exchange event that is unfolding before us on July 15th onward. This exchange, this energy is also associated with not a particular date, but a fluctuation of energies building up momentum to create essentially a wave. And that wave is then emitted enough with energy emitting through its essence to arrive through us through our actions, through our language, and through various other sectors where we see not only the language arrive, but it gives us an idea of how we're not only connected to the perception of consciousness, being able to perceive these concepts, but to work with them, navigate them, become self-aware in the process and utilize the understanding of the self to navigate with our best gifts. So without further ado, I'm gonna give you a brief intro just to give you an idea for those who are just tuning in for the first time, who I am, I'm gonna give you a sense of pretty much like a quick rundown. So essentially I'm a polymathic artist here. I've been just like JB Slayer, 10 years, over a decade essentially, pretty much analyzing webbot data. So like I deconstructed Cliffbot or Cliff High, I should say, created this webbot that essentially was able to create these emotional data structures that we can then utilize based off the input of the human interaction on the zones and the time periods available to us. And then based off their tones, based off the way that they emit, and at the same time too, their arrival and their sets, we work with more data that gives us something together. Now, his interpretation of that data is unique of its own right. So when he released things like the Ultra Report and various other segments where he took his data analysis, his interpretation of his data that he's collected over time to present ideas and concepts, not only with the narrative that he's familiar with, but the narrative that may be unfolding before us without knowing. Now, I think there's a lot of inaccuracy in terms of one can interpret just as much as one can interpret an astrological chart or tarot divinative reading. We are here to have our own language and symbolism. So based off our experience, what we have to offer and even the resources available to us, we gain the experience and the know-how and even the ability to even arrive at conclusions based off the experiences we're provided, even the nature we are. So when he utilized his own nature to create the system, he developed something that helped many, many individuals get into a lot of ideas and concepts before they started to arrive. This is why he created this vacuum of sort of attention to see that this play out of event, it might not have to be accurate, it might not even have to be 100%, but this idea that we can show this coming out much like cards in astrology, the exemplification of the examples give us the experience to understand the best ways to assess and see the overall value. Now, this is something that you should just apply to any lesson when you're given a substance because we invest our own value. So when you want to have a good ritual resource, you can either choose to have it where it looks good, but it lacks the substance, or you can go straight to the substance, whether you acknowledge it, whether you even accept it, whether you even try to connect with it or honor it, that's a whole different story, but credits do where credits do, it arrives when it arrives. Where you get it, where you come from, that's a respect of the individual and how we express it out. So regardless of this flow, this is here because it's adding to the conversation, not because I'm having a conversation with Cliff, not because this is coming out there, not because this is a populist favoritist perspective. This is my analysis of this perspective based off the uniqueness. Now, why do I have this uniqueness? Not only do we have this decade long understanding of it unraveling, 
to grasp a greater analysis of not only the structure, but the deconstruction. But then you introduce the whole concept of essentially my chart is placed where you have this sun with Lilith, this rebellion of this light acting in the area of Scorpio in the underworld, the shadow realm. Now you have right after that, the Venus. So I create and I create through the rebellion of my light. And if I'm placed in the shadow, what is the most rebellious thing you can do to a shadow? You reveal it with light. So essentially that's what I'm doing through my nature, through my art, through my creation. This is a part of it too, just as my nature of expression is a form of art. So in this case, I'm utilizing astrological understandings, plus my own personal experience of utilizing my polymathic perspective of pulling from many, many resources and considerations, because not only was I able to create occultic symbolism illustrations a decade ago, but that evolved into shadow light tarot, which I just said, I bring light to the shadow. So I created a whole tarot series on stuff, created multiple tarot decks in work in progress stills, and then from there, continue to explore even further knowledge. So I advanced my astrological understandings to build that up to essentially construct the true star astrology concept that aligns us to a more sidereal association to take into consideration the light of the constellations. This too is in development of the deconstruction of the symbols, not only based off what we have available, but pulling from old texts and manuscripts and all sorts of like imagery that this is how I pulled from my knowledge through the visual essence of understanding, not only the essence of what they understood, but through the experience of piecing it together by a deconstruction effort to understand how it works. We got no IKEA pretty much to-do list here. This is you figuring it out. Now, what I figured out is why I'm able to present this information. So now here with all that behind me, I've developed not only in my last couple of years, Astro Herbal, this is my astrological culmination merged with my medicinal plant studies. So not only that, I extended on top of my cult symbolism, on top of my whole concept of astrology and the tarot, but then I wanted to explore that even more by understanding nature, the greatest gifts all around to us that provide us with so much, heal so much and have so much lessons to think the capability that nature has even around us, around where we live alone, could offer us more and enrich us more than most of the resources that we take for granted. Now that's the thing with nature. It's always available whether we acknowledge it or not. So with all this behind me in terms of like me building up to be in this present moment, expressing myself so you can understand all of this expertise unraveling itself, this is gonna give you a, a good idea. Now, I'm no stranger to Cliff High. I've communicated with him a couple times, but we haven't had a direct conversation, not yet. It's mostly through email. I know that I connected with other individuals that are connected through a circle like Vic Square. Not only was I the artist that I created the avatar that Vic Square uses in all his thumbnails and such, that was me back in the Telegram days when stickers were a big thing. Now you got AI art, so you can generate whatever you want. But that was something hand done and he guest hosted me. So I was able to discuss with him and he was able to perceive the way that I was coming off in the sense that was very much akin to this cliff high essence, this idea where you're utilizing a whole set of not only knowledge, but resources and then analysis to bring apart more of a perfectionist way of execution in the expression, in the way that you create the information so that it's then digested in a better way. It's a way of creating a cuisine that is a work of art so that not only do you experience the material, but you get something of substance from it. That's the key core of anything that you're associated by making a work of art. And any work of art is going to be supported by creation along the way. Universal One works that way. We honor that by honoring ourselves, but that's a whole lesson for another day. So here, I want to start diving into the astrological analysis here, because coming back to this chart, we're taking a look on the 15th of July. Now, this is for placement in New York at 11, 11 a.m. So I'm just taking a sense of what's going on because I'm not here to look at the rising sign where the angle of the light is arriving. I'm looking at the planetary relations to see how can we better understand what's coming up. Now, I listened to Cliff's chat with JC last night, Beyond Mystic. Now, his talk with John claude was able to bring about a little clarity, but throughout the whole listening party, I was taking notes essentially to deconstruct whether his analysis was inaccurate, whether it's an interpretation as true, or whether it's associated with the concept of how we take into consideration the specialties that each of us have. For example, 
He might be lacking individual experience or perspective that might give him a little more information to work with in terms of systems and symbols. But in this case, I want to deconstruct based off my notes available to me because this expression, this feminine approach to just honestly open and express this concept, this Uranian energy of bringing this Mars passion through so that it arrives through mercurial light. So this shining of this light coming in to get a sense of the feelings between the light present and the creation present. Now, if you take that whole concept I just said, that is an analysis of poetically expressing the times currently through the planetaries that are happening. Now, I'm gonna take a more approach where you get to deconstruct it with me, where I show you the symbols, I show you the relations, I'll show you the notes so that you can understand firsthand what exactly we're looking at and not just my interpretation, but data that you can see that I'm utilizing something that anybody could utilize. It's just my way of going about it is a way of bringing light to it. So thank you for taking part. So let's see here. So I wanna open up here by starting with my notes so we can go in order, structured, and at the same time too, hit all the marks without going off the rails. I think art is happy accidents, so we can't always plan everything. And I don't think it's best to structure everything in life, but having a good plan helps execute things a lot easier when we want to look for efficiency. So here, I want to create a contention. And that contention is specifically is for his webbot data speculation. Now, this is a lesson of expression. So it's about timing and emitting to be. Now, time is just emittance reversed. So when you're looking at time, the coming into being and the emittance, the heart expressing itself, those are the two parallels, the yin and the yang. One, each in its own direction. So we are emitting just as much as we're having time. We can't have one without the other. Now, in this case here, when we're looking at the lesson of expression, it comes through just not just the nature of who we are, the nature available to us, the resources available to us, the alignments through the complexity of who we are through the nature, not by the complicatedness, but through the way that it naturally unravels based off what's available to it. It doesn't need to be structured when it's a natural construct because it's unraveling much like a blossom. It welcomes with light. So it's not a force. It's not a artificial culmination. It is a way of it unraveling. So I want to address Cliff's interpretive limitation here because I know he's stated a lot in the past that he had his ons and offs, but it's not about being accurate. It's about being an individual to put the work in to arrive at all these data sets, to have an interpretation. Just as much, it takes a lot of effort to invest in understanding astrological perspectives so you can read a chart and bring about those types of analysis. You need to invest the time to understand what you're able to conceive. And over a period of time, through the essence of the internet, we can display over a period of time, just like this video here, giving an essence of ideas and concepts in the moment so that we can express them, understand them, and look back to reflect where they came out, why they came out. And even if we don't acknowledge it or if we aren't even aware of when it came out, the timing of it, that is based off our individual experience. So that is something that as long as we can put it out in the world, universe works with it to provide the message presently when it is present. So the limitation, resources, experience, and approach that is taken by an individual is always limited by the individual's nature. Now, I don't think that anyone should be down on their nature because everyone's born with their gifts is just as much as they're born with challenges. Everyone has a Chiron and that's the wounded healer. So we have to learn to deal with the tough so that we know how to deal with the tough better to help those ready to deal with it. So either way, his unconscious preference is a big focus for him. So maybe his limited amount of time and what he can do and through his age and uh, I guess his commitments, He's limited by what he takes in. So he doesn't take in everything, even if it's the best resource, he uses the resources that are populist. So for example, like the whole concept of obsession with Tim Pool, that is association with the idea that Tim Pool is just, when you put the energy into it, you're replacing an E into the T-I-M. You're creating the time, one of his other obsessions. And then the pool is just to bring them together. So his way of exception with the name itself is nothing more but the arrival of the symbols of letters that are associated with his most common interest. So in this case, he's attracting it just as much as he's attracted to it. So in which case, that's why you develop the circle of individuals, which is why you keep your friends close, because you need to know that you can trust them. You need to know you can understand them. And through the internet, we can't always personally have an experience where we know people firsthand. You don't always just feel their field and understand what they're attached to. We can't fully know. They're, the world's very like, it's based off our experience and that's subjective. 
So in which case you got individuals like BigSquare, which I've connected to, Dick Algeyer, which promoted an additional RV perspective on it, but his association with Cliff High too is also a heightened sense of excitement associated with the populism. And the same thing with a lot of these individuals, even with John Claude from Beyond Mystic, his individual self of being able to express and have this perspective of how he's seen and perceived, that is a whole other level of why he creates a more barrier around what he does. Because I'll tell you what, all these three individuals, I attempted to reach out and communicate with them this year, but there was no response. So it's not that they are willing and available to work with the universe arriving, but it is the sense of the nature present for the lessons to be learned, for what is going on for us to work and deliver when we're meant to. Even at the time of, for example, miscommunication contention, that gives us the ability for each of the individual to understand their path even more. So for example, through my messages not being able to be received, I was able to fine tune my refinement where I've arrived at a more refined analysis that gives me more perspective and experience that puts me at a more position, a better position, I should say, that gives me information and knowledge. I like to present and express out into the world. This is important because that's how we work and we navigate to deconstruct and work with how we can piece together what is and what ifs. So in this case here, I want to come back to the idea that we're not doing any blue beams, no DMTs. I don't think there's going to be any major events. I think we can speculate based off like drama on like ongoing conventions and weather. And obviously the political presidency is just like a concept that is being attention towards, but whether or not that falls through the cracks or you get the whole idea of things just happening just to create some sort of event that is unknown at the moment. Really? Everything is unknown presently, unless you're like a part of the orchestration of an event that is going to occur, but that's only acknowledgement of being aware of the situation. We can't understand how nature is going to arrive. It's like saying, hey, this tree is going to grow over in that direction. No, each moment, there is a moment. Light is given the ability to adapt. Light provides, even through the resources of being exposed to EMFs, radiation, whatever you do, light provides you the ability to offer adaption. That's why we're given light, its potential and that we revolve around light is very much the nature of why we understand how nature works, which is why we have individuals like Walter Russell given about this science of light that gives you not only perspective, but then you look at the concepts of astrology, which speaks the same type of language, but utilizes it in a different form and fashion prior to his time. The idea is that the available symbols are always there for us to utilize. Whether we can acknowledge them is a participated effort and willingness to invest our thought and processes to piece together something that works with us, our language, and the way that we perceive the world. So, for example, otherwise this universal timeliness of arrival is only going to arrive when it's meant to, and you can't always decide. It's a message of its times. It's a way that we can understand that we are nature. So some of the expression language that comes out and arrives through us is the nature of the nature. So our nature embodied within us and the bodies provided that uniqueness when we arrive, the angles of the planetaries and the light, that is important because it gives us perspective of what we're working with, the resources. So when we understand and evaluate the resources at hand, some of us have more advantages than others, which is why we have a better expertise in certain fields and attractions. But when we're looking at something that is more arriving of timeliness, that is a lesson of the message of the times. It is the lesson of the times through the message of the nature. It's a reversal because it's a yin yang concept. The more you give, the more you take. There's both processes in the nature, just as much as you're able to then create from the opposite to pull from that way. It is a give and take. It is paradoxical, but in a sense, it's polarity. So when you look at an astrology chart, it's circular because it's polarizing our perspectives of where we can conceive essentially just a surrounding. And now we want a surrounding of incoming communication, which is what we are carrying through the light to understand how nature communicates. So with all that is said, we're still not perceiving anything major happening because you have too much in the system trying to support itself. Just like in 2020, with the wealth distribution ways of providing stimuluses so that the businesses can still take away the money for the people to participate in what they want versus what they need, that is giving the people an idea that this system is still around. They need the system because they want to milk it out. It's a milk and honey protein. So the idea is that we want to recognize where we're putting our energy because you have the Taylor Swifts, you have the Fortnites, you have even the releases of concepts like movies and stuff. Like 
movies are shit nowadays, but you still have excitement around things. I believe I hear people talk about Deadpool and Severance as if these topics and concepts are exciting people. But these people, these you can even say normies, but appreciations of the concept of what they've grew up with and connected to based off the times. But when you have a century of generational conditioning, it's really difficult to separate the pop culture from the cultural heritage of attractive nostalgia, which is different. But the play on the playoff is to see the potential of what if, which is why we are curious to see what if when we see the what if. And that's this whole generation of AI coming into a nutshell, which brings me 21 minutes into this, getting into the chart, which is one of the most important parts of this conversation in general. So this introduction, this opener, as much as you're willing to sit through this and listen, this deconstruction opener gives you not only building blocks to work with the language, of the language, in the moment of the language, but then you can understand the position here being provided information-wise. It's the opening up to give a speaker the understanding to know their expertise, where they offer their time and energy, and where they're coming from, so that you can have a better understanding. It is an artist creating an art, but then you're understanding the position that artist was in to be inspired while also working with the circumstances. And that's where we are now. So 22 minutes on my clock, probably gonna trim this in the beginning. So not really 22 minutes in, but now about 20 minutes in, we're gonna take a look at the chart. Now, the first thing I wanna open up with is a statement I made on May 5th on X, Twitter, whatever. When Cliff initially brought about the July 15th date, this concept on May 5th, now, I wrote this specifically as a reply, whether it's seen as a whole different story. But July 15th, I said, is when the sun, soul, the heart, relatively opposes Pluto in retrograde. And Pluto in retrograde is the intersection of spirit extending away from us. So the intersection, if this is us and this is spirit, it's the intersection of what can come in through spirit, through concept, through out of the blue. This is the end of the field coming into the field of the sun, the light. So we want to understand here that this means that the gap between the central sun, the heart, and the intersecting waves of spirit and source, I should say, are more present within our waking reality for this period. And that's July 5th, back on May 5th, Cinco de Mayo. So with that May 5th at hand, we're looking at this perspective that I've been building up to analyze this. And so far, every couple of days, I'm taking in the information newly available to us so that we can have a real-time lesson of not only an astrological approach to the WebBot data, but analysis of the information at hand. So even if nothing does come of this, we want to take a look back and understand where can we be more accurate? Where can we express ourselves more clearly? Where can we use this to transform, to express ourselves for the better? Why are we gonna go through all this? Well, that's what I'm about to tell you with a chart. So let's get started. So to open it up, we're gonna get my trusty little digital pen here, and we're gonna open up here and take a look here. So one thing I wanna go over quick is the notes. So the first thing that is, is a Pluto retrograde opposite light of the sun, which is just what I brought up from the May 5th. Now, what you're seeing here is this transformative realizations. And it's a reconfigurement of the way that you're looking at your challenges to change. Your challenges are also coming from Saturn, which is also in retrograde, but the Pluto-ness is the change itself. It's a reorientation of how we're looking at the transformations available to us. We're seeing it in a new light. In which case, this opposition is a perspective shift. It's a reorientation while also being a release. Things that we have considered but not have fully had the time to address are here so we can take our attention and then readdress what has yet to be addressed so that we can properly arrive where we're meant to based off where we are now rather than where we were. So in this sense, you're seeing this reorientation of change opposing the light, which is the soul, the sun, the heart. And it's life-changing based off what Cliff High states. And that's life-changing because this is Pluto. This is a realization. This is a transformation to do something different. Change your model, change your mode, change your direction, change the way you operate, change your mental capabilities to express yourself in a new light. 
this way of doing it is important because it's not just an event that happens to us. It's a circumstance to arrive at something where we make the choice through the light, through the Venus of creation. We make the choice to take actions through the Uranus and Mars coming together suddenly to make changes. So we're really reoriented by the decision to do it in the now and it's caught up with us. So we have to do it now or it's now or never. That's the very much important of dealing with timely circumstance. That doesn't mean it's gonna be eventful. That doesn't mean a lot's going to happen. This means on an individual level, we're each facing transformation towards our own emittance of light in our own way. But that's just the language we're communicating the light at this time. So you're looking still at this arrival of the energy of light and we're faced to reorient just to transform, which transformation is challenging for people, especially shadow work, because nobody wants to see the shadow and nobody wants to do the work. So it's just something people are feel is a lot to take on. But in reality, once you start putting one foot in front of the other, before you know it, it's behind you. And that's the greatest part of transformation because it puts you in a brand new position that you never thought you would arrive in until you're there. And that's important because you need to see for yourself that this is possible. You need to have an experience and experience gives us the lessons, gives us the communication so that we can understand each other. But we don't need to understand each other more than we understand ourselves because we're here to be ourself, our nature, but we're of the time of universe consciousness being brought into this moment. So being is more important than anything else, which is why we are a light. Now, moving on to Pluto in retrograde still. So not only do you have the sun opposite to it, you have entirely the whole concept of Venus being opposite. Now, Venus opposite is this creative energy, but it's a feminine listen energy of how we connect. It's how we are inspired. But when we're creating, we're looking at the concept of art because you're taking a more, it's not a structural paint by numbers. It's a figuring out discovery. And that discovery, this understanding through listening, is important because that's how you take in the arts. That's how you take in nature. And it's important because when you're working with Venus, Venus is important for each of us as we all have it in our chart. It's the idea that we want to transform creation just as much as we're using creation to transform. Now, this creation, this connection, the support mechanism is important because when you pair a Venusian energy with light, you get this artisan energy of creation where the light itself can't help but create. It can't help but be inspired, but be an act to highlight the beauty in the world. That's what art truly is to show you what is capable of the alignment of true light, of true acting with source. So in these cases here, you're looking at on top of Mars and Uranus being introduced to this Venus factor. We're seeing the ability that we want to create. We want to create suddenly. Now this fits perfectly with the concept of AI. We can't just arrive at AI. It has to come out as it comes out. And in this time period, we're given this drive for sudden, out of the blue, generative creational content. And who would know that exactly at this time period, we're getting visual appearance generation. So this is AI video generation, which utilizes systems like Runway, Kling, even Luma. These concepts of taking an image or connecting two images and generating the motions and the connections, not only are we generating something on the spot, prompting the sudden out of the blueness, but we're investing energy and drive to it. Is it not just a drive that we have to take power to convert, but is it also the electrical energy of that drive that we're investing all this technological energy into these functions, that we have to pay for servers, that we have to pay for upkeep that we have to create systems that haven't been done before. And that's important because you're looking at a whole new financial system technically with the introduction of cryptos. And cryptos was a big scale because you're looking at a blockchain technology that utilizes a transparent technological advancement to create an alternative system. But that system is supported by those who voluntarily choose to participate just as much as the fiat system. But before we're forced into it by a nation, now we're given the choice to choose independence and freedom by choosing a system that aligns with who we are. Now we're looking at Venus, this AI generation mixed with the cryptos mixes because some of these generations are coming from China. Some of these programs and advancements not only to the AI system, 
but to the developments, the way that we can take face tracking and instantly put it on still images, the way that we can transform so much digital data to not only make our life generative, but more generative than we can keep up with, which is what hypo novelty is in a nutshell. We can't just get through it all. It's too much. And even if you can, you only have so much of a mittens. And that's so much time we have to give. So it's where you invest truly your energy because there's so much to distract you just as much as there's so much to liberate you to do what you're meant to do. So in this case here, when you're looking at these runways and these clings, the ability to create music videos, movies, trailers, based off AI, we're having commercials now that are fully AI. The, the concept is it's here. We can't just say it's coming, it's present. And that's a message of the times, a lesson of the energy present with us. And when we're seeing that arrive, the correlation with video AI is that this technological end to function, this technology, requires all this energy, this electricity, just like crypto does. And we have to create an investment opportunity, which is why you see many of these generative, you can say utilities, are utilizing a tokenism, a way of utilizing a system built by the platform that's just like crypto, where it can support itself by utilization of the technology. And now if you create a system inside itself, just like the ton in Telegram, it can create additional systems that can survive on their own while interacting. Now you want to create the best universal communicating interaction of an exchange that is based off the individual and how open it can be exchanged. And that's why we have markets because some of us are looking for unique goods and some of us are very unique towards those goods. So it's a give and take. Now this brings us to the idea that the whole nervous system DMT thing that was RV'd by Dick Algeier, I can't say it's 100% accurate because there's a lot of things he hits and miss and some things too. It's populist, it's symbols, it's various reactions. And even my experience in lucid dreaming and out of body experiences and a lot of these concepts, I know based off taking the dream world, what you can perceive as this astral body and deconstructing the real time symbolism. You can get real deep into it, but at the same time too, that doesn't make you 100% accurate. It's called an interpretation until provided with evidence to support a correlation, can you conclude the potential of possibilities? But even then, that is providing based off experience and no one can validate that but yourself. So you take that with your soul. That's something that's gonna be a part of you because it's your nature, it's your essence of who you are, your soul, your However you want to place it, it's, it's what comes through you by you. So either way, the next sign I want to look into is Mercury, which is currently in Leo, also opposing, not directly, but opposing the sector of the sky where you have both Saturn and Neptune retrograde. Now, these two retrogrades are important because you're looking at Saturn, this structure, this restriction, this way of being hard ass, this Retrograde is giving you a relaxation to reconsider your orientation to this systematic support. Saturn wants to make sure you are like on point because it wants to make sure not only do you do the work, but you go through the process to learn, grow, and through the long term of it, it's worth it whether you see the value or not. But the retrograde gives us a reorientation so that our structures and our restrictions can lease a little so that we can choose to do better. We can choose to reorient, to work with these energy stuff. We don't have to say, never again are we gonna work with the system. No, systems are helpful. They help organize components so that they can construct itself and operate at a larger scale for a larger, you can say population, but it's mostly an interaction and exchange. So. When you're looking at this Mercury Leo, this is the essence of Leo is light. It's the shining. It's the essence of admittance. It's that Mercury wants to shine its light. It wants to emit its trueness. It wants to be something that comes through us by the nature of our light. And when you're having this opposition to something like Saturn, and then when you got Neptune retrograde too, which is idealism, you, you have this least restriction, but a reshaping of the structure. But with these ideals of Neptune, you have this released ideal, but a renewed goal to change. And that's thanks to Pluto. So the awareness of the self and the radiating, the radiating, the radiance of the Mercurius Leo energy, wherever it's in your chart, or wherever it's presenting itself for light to shine, that is important because it's opposing the reorientation of the structure, the system, the way that we have a perception. We 
can combine these and say the idealism of the system, of the restriction, the idealism of government, the idealism of systematic money, the idealism of any of these long-term structures that have outlived our generation, that, that, the idea we had for it, oh, it's worth it, oh, it's needed, oh, it helps me. Those are being changed. Those are being reconsidered. Why do we need that? That's the questions we're asking. That's the arrival we're seeing through us. Now, it's interesting because once you get the Mercury, you're dealing with an exchange of processing that comes into the money financial sector because we want to exchange, we want to process, but it's a flow of energy. It's how we are directing that energy and where it's going that is important of that Mercurial process. It works by listening, but it also works by directing. It wants to be able to create a ways to send that information of energy, this energy of information, however you want to state that factor, it's present in the model, in the arrival. So when you're seeing this, going back to the whole AI, crypto, and China revelations, when Cliff High stated in his chat with JC, the China tsunami, I think it's going to come via an AI tech revolution. It doesn't have to be a bank crash. That's just what happens from the AI tech revolution. Why is that? Because you've got the AI video gen becoming a game changer, not only to the environment on the internet, but the individuals who choose to challenge a system where you needed all this structure to pull off to something to visually show. Now it's done like, so it's there with you, it's present. You can't choose not to consider that something as a technological achievement, even if you're slot making. The idea is that it can do that is an idea to show us how far we've advanced in utilizing this set of hardware and technological structures because that's all we were using that's all we've been using besides the development of advancing open source even the concept of where you people see oh we're using a windows no linux exists too the idea of code code exists because we create the structure we create the language because we want to have an experience and when we're creating solutions for experiences at a distance we utilize tech. So it's important that when we're utilizing this tech at a distance, it's to help us connect to something that advances us forward in a way that we wouldn't have had prior. So obviously you can get distracted on the internet just as much as you can learn and advance yourself. But the way that you're seeing this China tsunami come into play is because of the tech revolution is requiring some sort of capability to pay for the server, the energies, the electrics. Now, just as much as the crypto industry is requiring so much of the generation of power, so is the AI industry required that they are not only needing the use of high coolage systems, but the way that they require the energy to arrive to cool off everything is a large factor that is not only going to challenge systems, but open up new avenues for people to create new solutions. Now, that's going to be needed based off the evidence, but you're not going to see more of a public play tool. This is going to be used behind doors prior to seeing it utilized in industry, then arriving in the hands of the individual, unless the individual open sources it, in which case, do whatever the fuck you want. That's you. So we're going to see this revolution of tech, and you got to pay for the tech. You got to pay for the server. The hosting, all of it is important, and cryptos have to come when you're tokenizing it. So this exchange of not only this cripple of the fiat, but crypto investing this token sustainability of utilities, of server maintenance, of costs to function, that is the tech industry use of covering expenses, utilizing cryptos, utilizing tech. Now the thing is, just like any exchange, this is a yin yang process. So the yin yang east to west here, if the east is using these tokens to invest in these capabilities, these generations, these upkeeps, if it's a desire from a populist perspective, you're seeing this east invest in west and the west is investing in the east. Why? Because the east creates the tech for the west to invest into just like the 2020 redistribution model gave those who wanted to use a system, the ability to afford that system. So you're going to have to play ball some way or another, in which case you're seeing fiat funnel itself into crypto just as much as you're seeing crypto overtake to cover expenses 
because we're utilizing technological achievements that require more energy, but also require less expenses. So we need to find a way to give more energy at less expense, which is why we need a new fiat exchange system. Fiat don't work. But when we create an alternative exchange system, not only do our natural gifts provide us the ability to exchange, but we can create alternative systems through the creative uniqueness of our life that's present with us right now. The creative solutions are present to give us transformative potential. And each of us, we're going to do that, whether we acknowledge it or not. You can reflect over this period of time of how we were reoriented in the three sectors of transformation, structure and restriction, as well as idealistic perspectives, the way that we may even be caught into the concept of illusion can be changed. So it's a very important at this time that we can reorient and change our way we not only perceive and work with these structures, but how these structures work with us. And if we choose to opt out, that is our choice that can change an entire evolutionary perspective of how you see this arriving in time. And arriving is just as much a waning process as much as it is a waxing process. You're seeing both happening at the same time, depending on which direction you're looking. Polarities. So anyway, the crash, if there is any crash from the exchange at all, because exchange is still going to work with the money and people still want to utilize the functioning because people want it too much that they will go very much out of their way to ensure a system is supporting them. So it's really a last standing survival crash more than a crash because it don't work no more. I mean, it already don't work no more. It's just whether we acknowledge it because it's propped up. But the, the crash of survival is because you are flocking. You can destroy a platform like MySpace by creating another ecosystem that instantly builds up enough reputation that it then starts to decrease the usage that that network was utilizing your attention, resources, and time for. And not our problem because a lot of these things were siphoning your energy and using you for their own product. That's something we need to re kind of reevaluate. I mean, don't be a product. Simple, be a human, be a freedom, be your God-given right of life in body to be. Like, know it so you can be it. Or be it so you can know it. it. It's up to you, really. So continuing back to the whole Cliff High JC chat, he mentioned that on the 16th, that we could look at a 1 a.m. flush release. And I looked at this, too, because I wanted to see the date here. What is happening? And the thing is, nothing really moves besides the moon in that time span. So the only thing that is going to be triggered in that time, technically, is the moon, which is your emotion, your field, the way that you're connected without the sense. It's the connection of your field. It's the connection of the energetic exchange that is nonverbal. It's not direct exchange. It's magnetic. So this essence of our magnetic self, this emotion, this way that we're feeling our emotion of our field, this is feeling is opposing Mars and Uranus, which is coming together. It's coming to work with us. So maybe our emotions are starting to oppose the sudden action. So maybe we're regretting the action. Maybe the release itself is just like an understanding of knowing our emotion wasn't with our actions. Because when you have two polarities, you lean too much in one way, you get yourself off the road. But when you balance the energies and work with it, you're on a tightrope. And you're working with both of these as you're communicating to get to the other side. Now, with this emotional sense here, and this sudden need to act, you don't want to act on your emotions because they're going to oppose it. But you can use your emotions to evaluate your actions, your sudden actions, and gain better understanding to meet them in the middle. So that even if your emotions aren't 100% behind your sudden actions, you can utilize yourself to meet in the middle. So maybe your sudden actions need to understand that you need to honor your emotions more, or maybe it's your emotions needing to be able to respect the fact that you have these emotions and you don't want to suddenly act. It is a awareness of where you're directing your energy based off what is being 
asked of your energy. And that's experience where you are experiencing, not this experience. So I want to also touch on something coming up too, which is Neptune retrograde opposite the South Node because the nodes don't get talked about as much. Now, the South Node here placed all the way, let's see where it's at. It's, it's essentially in Virgo in my true star astrology, sidereal sense. And that's where the constellation is, so don't argue with me. And that south node, that orientation of this releasing of the moon's pull with the earth, with the directional energy in which we're receiving light in general of the directional field, that south node orientation is the ideal is to release the past. So a lot of the past, a lot that is behind us, a lot that is no longer part of us, even like past life trauma, that is also associated with this. A lot of the idealism that we associate with, a lot of the illusion of past life trauma, a lot of the illusion of the past and releasing, maybe it's been caught up, maybe it's been distracted, maybe we've been caught up in illusion to release, but we're releasing this illusion, this release of the past, this opposition of this release with idealism reorientation is important because when you want to take this release, this release energy even, you want to ensure that it's going to arrive in an honest manner because you can be deceptive in the world. That's illusion. And that's Neptune giving us our ideal of what we want to perceive, not what is, which is great, but we're working at a state of what we want it to be out of the highest potential of our perceived love or perceived connection. But we're limited by our nature, so it's important. Now, the option of the South Node, we want to understand that what we're coming from the past as to release, this Neptunian sense is a reorientation. Now, I like to look at cycles and cycles themselves, like if you look at them, you get the sun oriented with the cycle of the earth. But when you look at other cycles, like the moon happening in the moon and other areas of planetary involvement, where you see over a layer of time, this post-Saturn return, Saturn making a full cycle, gives you all these inner planets finally coming full rotation almost in a sense where they're returning to who they once were to evolve even more. And now once you have that under the 30, this 30 years, this 33 even, that this concept of this time span that shows us our connection to the 90s currently right now is bringing back this concept of Neptune, this concept of the orientation of how we understand that populist movement into UFO and mysticism that took place in the 90s. When we looked at unsolved mysteries, the Loch Nesses and the Bigfoots, the way that we evolved the concept of the X-Files and all these ideas coming out, not only as a move of the industry, but as a move of interest, which is why you had more arrival of individuals like Bill Cooper and all these other arrivals of individuals talking about things. Even Alex Jones that utilizes the name currently, we are looking at his activity back in the day, being a part of this movement, being part of this generation of interest that shows us a new look of the truth, which is why after that decade, it was very important that we had to sustain some sort of traumatic event like you could perceive like 9-11 to inject the populace with a more concern for attachment of the system at place rather than a challenge to arrive at where we are presently, where we're not in agreement anymore and we just need to do something new. Otherwise, we're going to lose even more than what the system is giving us. And nobody wants that, especially when your life is on the line. This is life, life emittance of your potential of being. Nature itself should be able to be and nature will find a light to be and it is always providing. It doesn't stop. So it's shining like a light. Don't turn that off. Just where you're oriented to that light at that time of experience. So we're, we're seeing this moon act in these oppositions and we're, we're seeing this Neptunian acts in these oppositions and these reflective emotions of how we're attached to UFOs and mysticisms. The arrival of the 90s were a big key because we introduced so many like new avenues of potential. And now that we've hit the digital status, we've gone through the shiny plasticky mood of it all and arrived on the other end to come back from being horrified by the AI that we want to have this realism experience. We want to work with our hands. We want to be more real than ever. And we want something of substance. So it's important that we get back to our roots and realign to where we once were because we want to move forward in the best of light. And even like, when you have instances of nature and you have these electrical power lines, for example, even if them are creating EMFs around them because of the field of emittance of energy, you're looking at the way that when the light travels through through the sun, you will notice that the grass will grow more based off the water available to it. Why? Because you have this energy present. 
And then you have this energy from the sun coming in. But when you're combining them together, you're amplifying it, which is offering more potential of energy, but at the same time too, to make up for that energy, the light from the sun, the nature of the light of source is giving in potential from the artificial injection of the direction of energetic potential. So it is not flavored at this moment, but it is exchanged. So when you're combining it, you arrive at potential for nature to generate more to make up for adaptability, which is why when you see in nature, when it has to ecosystem rebalance itself, that is the restoration through natural environment of growth of new things. Even the concept of just dandelions alone are applying a detox mechanism to nature to help provide either nutrients and soil to what is present, but also provide the ability of what the plant can function to the ecosystem, to the mycology, to even the trees and the breath and even the expression of the seeds itself from there on after are all connected to why did it arrive there? There's a reason connected to it beyond us just participating in it. And even if you look at the expression of roads, we are placing a dominance over a system of exchange of movement, of motion. But when in reality, at the end of the day, nature is still present underneath this restriction, but it will arrive and one day cover it back up again because everything comes back to its nature when given enough time, given enough admittance, we arrive back at nature just like a Kali Yuga. It is our nature arriving back into itself, called consciousness, but it is what it is. So anyway, we're going to wrap this up because we've gone and extended this as long as I can. I want to cover a few things quick. For example, the whole idea that was covered in the JC and Cliff chat. We're going to look at the ideas that this, what came before us to create this organic life had to become a wave life. This wave life, this, this life in waves had to create a function of a modified organism to embody in that side. And that modified organism provided the potential for we, us, the idea of consciousness to arrive in so that we can operate in the organic bodies. Just like when we're in a dream, we're technically ourselves, but the organic body is tied to us in the presence. But how we're operating is an extension of ourselves meeting the body. So when we have this body, we have not only a tool set to work with, but we now are arriving at a state of advancement where over the last decade, we've built technological tools and hardware utilizing crystals. So now we're an organic modified organism utilizing crystal tech to operate not only technology, but functions in the field, in the calculations of the generations, even the idea of like, randomly number generate, even the idea of AI generation through prompts and limitations, what arrives in that time is a dividend of sense. It shows up as a form of arrival by the instance of life happening in itself. It doesn't just end up there, but our acknowledgement of it, awareness of it, is an act of its time because that is attention directed in those moments, in those motions, in the way where expression and any of the energy there from those motions, those emotions are the field we're feeling around to navigate it all. And even when you look at what's going on now from the last four years, I know when I had my chat back with Bix a couple of years ago, back then I was still calling out the fact that, yeah, we know bio labs exist. Yeah, we know that we can't conclude. Yeah, we don't trust the shit that's coming out. And no, why are we going to consider the whole concept? And look at that, how that played out. Now we're at a sector where we can actually see an analysis of where they're continuously utilizing the system to fuck over individuals based off the system of advantage of the few. And we don't want to create this because it's not a system in us. It's a system created by the dominance. Dominance is chosen of expression. Power is energy invested in the dominance. So that dominance is only dominant based off its power available. You take away that power, the energy investment, system has no power. That's how we defeat government. It's not a defeation. It is a way that we can work with the system that create something that is going to take its role and beyond it. And that's the idea of what's happening with AI. We're taking something that provides a role and go beyond it, where you don't need a team. You need an individual who knows how to use the language of the tool. Kind of like the mind-body system, because you don't want to just throw people into it. You want to have someone who knows how to navigate it. But because you mess up or you do something wrong, you're wasting time, energy, and effort. And nobody has time for that. Nobody wants to go in a direction. We can detour in nature. That's one thing of a lesson provided. But at this end of the day, when we make our mistakes, we need to learn. 
But when we can learn from our mistakes before we make them, that gives us efficiency. That gives us better arrival. That gives us the ability to pull off our gymnastic expression of nature to then stick the landing and know that we were meant to be by universe because of the nature to be. Just like I'm expressing to you in these moments to be. This is important. Why? Because it is to be. Not for my sake, not for my expression's sake, but for the sake of the time in the moment to build up everything that came before into the moment of everything that comes now into what is. This exchange of energy is here so we can then work with it and reorient it. It is not here to tell us to suddenly deal with it. It's here to tell us we are ready to deal with it. We are ready to take it on. We're ready to reorientate ourselves. We're ready to make the choice. And that's the truth. Not everyone's willing to make the choice of change right away. But during this time, everyone's probably going to experience some sort of life-changing event, even on a small scale. Based off the connection of all of us, even those who don't have any of these planetaries in their sectors, so much is going on right now that based off it expressing through your life, you will find your voice. You will find your language. You will find your expression. That will happen. Mars suddenly is going to express itself. You're going to have drive, passion, and action. And you're not going to sure what's going to happen of it or where it came from, but it's going to. So do it, honor it, but also be aware, be self-aware. Don't fall for traps, but give yourself the room to understand and listen because Venus is important with the sun. We have the potential to create with our life to change the world. Listen well so that you're honoring who you are. You're staying true. And by the time this is all behind us, you're glad you went through your transformation. That's all we can do. On the other side, you're still carrying water. You're still cutting wood. It's still going to have to take work, effort, and stress. Like Cliff said, stress isn't going away. So much shit's happening. And if you think that this sudden arrival of information of overwhelmingness is like a big factor right now, I'll tell you as a high processing individual that like takes information not only at a quicker pace, but a higher level of acknowledgement due to the level of perfectionism and constructionism that I apply to my processing. But not everyone's gifted with these assets. So we're all given a challenge one way in life or another. Not everyone's going to process easy while others are able to provide the voice of processing so that they can have something to reflect off of so that they can then work with themselves better. At the end of the day, those who don't know themselves work with the universe external to us to help us identify ourselves. Universe works in this way because it's beyond just the life of us. It is the operation of universe by its function. At the end of the day, astrology, the way of consciousness, the way of all this connecting, the deconstruction of the symptoms, the symbols, I should say, is still going to be relevant 100 years from now because nature stays true. Nature is always present. As long as we utilize the language of nature, we ourselves are going to, you can say evolve, but it's the efficiency to arrive not only beyond where we expect it, but beyond the potential of what we could perceive. That's always what universe is looking for in hypernovity. So when we want to see the sci-fi world, this new potential, this new language, this new way of discovering things, not only do you have individuals like Cliff, but you have individuals like myself currently at projects on hand, deconstruction through the art of symbolism. So we can utilize the symbolic language of present within us to understand not only the past, the future, but any concept. And if you're interested in that art of symbolism, you can check out that podcast where I deconstructed all A to Z in Jesus Christ. The concept is that it's available for us to arrive now that we have the tools to work with, to efficiently work with information that has been accumulated over time. Apply this to AI, apply this to life. What's happening as above, so below. And it is a motion. So honor that. In my last minute, I thank you for participating. I thank you for tuning in. I thank you for taking a look at what's going on and processing through this chart. And I would love to provide you additional information through the chart visually. So this is something that I'm glad I was able to show you on screen at least so you can see for yourself what's going on. And we'll evolve that even further. So thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again for being a part of this lesson. And as always, honor yourself, stay true. And do you really need anything else? I mean, I'm glad you got this information. You're welcome to leave a comment and feedback.
you're welcome to check out our other information as well. I know that we can go into this further, but in this moment now, we may revisit this by the 15th. We may revisit it on the 15th. We may have a post-reflection past the 15th. We don't know, but we're utilizing this to present information to work with a self-organizing collective, not because we're in contact, but because of the way that we're honoring our nature. And by honoring their nature, you get more true to the source and the substance to have a better resource available to you so that you know what the fuck is going on. So with that, take care, stay true, and as always, be the best you can be. Your soul wants it, you want it, honor it, love it, light it. That's who we are, that's who you are. Enjoy it.